Hello everybody, welcome back to we have another super easy video. We're talking about thin wall closed tubes today and we're going to be talking about how they relate to our previous problems for torque and what the difference is and what the use cases are for these types of equations. Now thin wall tubes have closed cross sections, meaning that the tubes do not have any breaks or slits along their length. And if we go back to our fundamental understanding of what happens when we apply a torque to a section, we're going to have an internal shear stress that's developed for the thickness of the member. And we used to say, or we said in those previous problems, that that max shear stress will develop at the furthest point away from the longitudinal axis. However, because the walls are super thin in these problems, we're actually going to consider that we can use an average shear stress distribution at the thickness for all of these elements, which is the unique use case for these problems. We can now analyze sections that have varying thickness uh, around this boundary perimeter, which, are, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Now the area of each of these segments, which is uh, something that we should already know, that dA is going to be t, our thickness at that point, times the length of the segment that we're analyzing, the infinitesimally small ds, right? Now going back to torque, we need to understand that there is a force that is being developed as a result of that average shear stress on the element, right? And the distance away from that is going to be h, which is the midpoint of the thickness or the midpoint of the distribution. And that's going to be coming from the longitudinal axis to that point, right? So back to torque. We have torque is going to be equal to h times the force, which is, once again, a fancy moment. We have the distance away from the force being applied times the actual force. Now let's relate that back to the shear stress. We know that force is going to be equal to the shear stress times the area of the segment. And we've just solved for that. So we are plugging that right into our equation. And simplifying, simplifying this for the entire section, we're going to be considering the line integral for this entire formula, which pretty much means we have to go around the entire perimeter, which is restricted by this distance h, which is the midpoint to that thickness, right? Now, if we consider that for each of these elements, we have a constant thickness, then that means we're going to have a constant average shear stress developed as well, meaning we only need to integrate for h ds. And all that means is what's going on in this blue area here, right? And if we understand that based on this length ds, to get back to that longitudinal axis, we're going to be creating a triangular shape we have to consider that this area DAM, which is the mean area for each of these segments, is going to be equal to H times DS times one half for a triangular area, right? Now we can rearrange this so that we can plug in this HDS in terms of the mean area. And we're left with a final formula for torque. And solving for the shear stress or the average shearing stress, we can actually get a different formula. And using similar derivation techniques based on the principles that we talked about, we also have angle of twist formulas for these problems as well. We're going to apply both of these in this problem to see how they work. Alrighty, so now we can hop into the problem. The problem is stating that we have a tube made of bronze, which has a rectangular cross section. And it says if we have it subject to two torques, it wants us to determine the average shear stress at points A and B, which are on the sides and the top face of the tube. And it also wants us to find the angle of twist at NC, assuming that the tube is fixed. So the first thing that we need to do is identify what our mean area is. And in order to do that, we need to also identify the dimensions of the mean area. We know that this mean area is bounded to the midpoints of the sections thickness, right? So we have the thickness here on the A sides, which is five mil and three mil on the tops and bottoms. If we have a total length of 40 on the bottom and the thickness of the walls on the sides are five mil, then we can relate that S1 is going to be 40 minus half of the thickness on this side and half of the thickness on this side. So S1 is going to look like this. We have 40 mil minus two half thicknesses of five mil. So you have two five over two millimeters, which will leave us with 35 millimeters which is equivalent to 0 0.035 meters, which is important because of our given units in the problem. 
We're going to do the same thing for S2 using the same logic. We have 60 mil on this side of the section here. And now we need to subtract two halves of these uh, thicknesses on the top and bottom. So we have 60 starting and we're subtracting two and then half of the thickness on each side. So we have three over two millimeters, which is going to leave us with 57 millimeters or 0 0.057 meters. Now we can finally solve for AM, which is simply S1 times S2. And once you have these two multiplied together, you're going to be left with 0 0.002 meters squared. Now to use these equations, we have to find the torque for the segments that we want to analyze. And in order to do that, we have to satisfy equilibrium in the system first. To do so, we are going to fill in this torque diagram and we set equilibrium as the condition being equal to zero when we have the torque at E, which is the support reaction, assume positive. And we have to consider the effects of the external torques being applied. So if we add a 25 in the clockwise direction, we're going to have a negative 25 there and a positive 60 for the torque applied at C. Now, solving for TE, we will be left with negative 35 newton meters and that is going to be clockwise based on our convention now since we have a fixed free support condition we know this torque is going to have to bring us back to zero at the support so we're going to start from c to d in this case where we have the 60 then the 25 is bringing us back down to 35 which is when we have that negative 35 bringing the system right back to zero. Okay, now we can start solving for the average shear stress at point A and point B. So in order to do this, we have to consider the segment DE where these points are lying and plug in to our average shear stress formulas. So the first one is for A, where we're going to have that 35 newton meters, and that's going to be all over two times the thickness at the point. So we're going to be considering that five mil section right here in terms of meters, that's 0 0.005 meters and times the area AM, which we have solved for as 0 0.002 meters squared. And solving that, we're left with 1.75 MPA. And a very similar process is going to happen for the point at B as well. The only difference now since we're in the same segment, the torque will be the same. The only difference is the thickness, right? We have 0 0.03 for that top point where B is lying, right? So plugging into this formula once again, we will be left with a value of 2.92 MPA. Now solving for theta at C, we know that this is equivalent to it asking for theta C with respect to D plus theta D with respect to E. And we're using this new fancy formula here. And this line integral DS is going to be explained when we start solving this. So let's start plugging in for this formula. We're going to have this first segment between C to D starting at point C and working our way towards that fixed support. That'll leave us with the 60 for that segment DC newton meter times the length of that segment, which is 0.5 meters. And then on the bottom, we're going to have a bunch of constant stuff, which is going to be the 4, the AM, which we solve for, which is right here, 0 0.002 meters squared. That is squared. And then 38, 10 to the 9 for the shear modulus of the copper. Now the DS over T, let's just explain this quickly. We're going to be taking that average length for each of these segments based on the distance H from the longitudinal axis, right? So we're taking these dotted lines here, which we've indicated. We're just simply summing that perimeter on top and we're relating it to the thickness that each of those lengths are present at. So for a rectangular shape, you're going to have two of these 57 millimeter lengths here over the thickness for those segments, which is five mil. And similarly for the top and bottom, you have the 35 on the top relating that to the three mil thickness for each of those segments. 
Now we're simply going to be repeating this, except now we have to consider the next segment, which is 35 times the length of 1.5, and all the rest of this junk is going to be exactly the same. Leaving us with our final answer, hope you guys can see this at the bottom, of 0 0.36 degrees. And those are your final answers for the problem.